everybody welcome back to my channel and I'm sorry if you're gonna hear any background noises I'm in my house and I'm in a squeaky chair so deal um, so this video is as it says I'm gonna talk about four things that I think as a physics student an undergrad that you will need to develop um, for furthering your career such as going to grad school or getting a job outside of undergraduate and this is kind of general so you can survive in physics as you go up higher. Um, number one, in my opinion, is learn how to code. And I know um, everyone's kind of like, well, no, duh. Um, but for me personally, I actually didn't know about that. Well, scratch that. I knew about coding. I didn't know how to code because no one really expressed that I would need to code outside of physics. I was under this impression that physics was just going to be a lot of a hand map, like hand calculations, size calculator. And I was aware that um, coding is important. You can make a calculator with coding, and I was aware of Excel, but I there was no class on how to do Excel and how to code for a physicist, which honestly I feel like is the most dumbest thing ever. And I'm sure there's other universities that might have those programs under the physics field, but the two universities I went to, I was not required to take coding. And I also had to take UPs. So I ended up taking UPs that I was more interested in rather than coding because um, I didn't have a lot of money. So I was going to take UPs that interest me and that's how I ended up going to grad school in Near Eastern Studies, first of all, um, and leaving physics. Because I love physics, it's just I feel like I can do more to better the world um, by doing what I'm doing now and trying to do that. But I do have a physics degree, so I can go into engineering and accounting um, paths. But besides that, so I have looked for jobs with my physics degree. Um, so, sorry, I have like weird lighting. I have a light here because my room's dark and my camera sucks. So I apologize for the lighting. Um, but for coding especially, um, that is something you're going to have to learn if you want a job outside of physics. And most jobs with your physics undergraduate degree is not going to be physics. It's going to be engineering. It's going to be data analyzing, data, data analyst. Um, it could be IT. It could be so many other different things. But for that, you're going to have to know coding. Coding is a great job skill to have. With your physics degree in that, you're all set, okay? Um, so I recommend, number one, learn coding. Either just take a um, basic 101 coding class in undergrad and then practice coding on your own. Because coding is one of those fields where you can practice on your own. And once you know the basics, maybe ask your physics professor if he has help with, uh, with his research. He might actually give you something that's kind of fluff, i.e. he doesn't really actually need it, to just make you start thinking and practice using your coding skills. And you can ask that for one of your professors that you love, your academic advisor, you can ask them to just give you a problem to do and uh, to make with your coding skills just so you can practice coding and that's one way you can get in there. Um, number two is talk to your professors and when you do talk to your professors it's not just talking about professors it's seeing if they have research opportunities or they know a professor that has research opportunities. As an undergraduate student you can do research opportunities. And I did one. I did nuclear astrophysics, which is the study of the stars. And it sounds more, the title sounds more fancier than what I actually, what I actually did. Um, but I enjoyed it. And that's something you can do as well. And it looks nice on your resume. And because of that, it gives you experience to work as a physicist. And it kind of helps you understand if you want to do theoretical work or experimental work. So in the field of physics, there is theoretical and um, experimental. And you have to kind of decide in graduate school 
which one you kind of like. And some people can't, you can go back and forth, but most of your professors are one or the other. And theoretical is really the math. These are the people that are just sitting around doing math. <laughs> that's the most, and that's not exactly what they do, but I'm just gonna expl simplify it so bad. That's kind of what they do. And they also code, by the way. And your experimental physicist is the hands-on person. This is the person that goes into the lab and does the experiments hands-on. And they also do coding. So both theoretical and the experimental do coding, but one focuses more on the mathematical theory and the other one focuses on trying to prove the theory, if that makes sense. Um, but you can be both, but most people try to do one or the other. And in your physics department, you should have professors that do both one or the other, or you might end up with a university where everyone's like a medical physicist, which is my second university. So I transferred universities when I got married. And the second university, all my physics professors were medical physicists, and that's not what I was into. I'm into astronomy and theoretical, i.e. string theory, um, in quantum mechanics and even gravitational etc and they didn't really have that and as soon as I graduated they hired a gravitational physicist so that sucked but find someone that kind of interests you find what each person's um, domain is and find them and maybe you can get research or just ask some questions talk to them and they'll eventually be like oh yeah I got you once you research for me and that's how I got my research was I just talked I went in and ask questions during office hours about homework and then I talked about my interests and I asked them about interest. And so number three is get to know your classmates and form study groups. That is gonna help you with your physics career in undergrad. And I'm not the most social person, so my first year or two I only had one study buddy uh, first year I had like two or three study buddies and I kind of gradually declined just because I'm not really the most social person and that did hinder me. I did have to work a lot harder. But when you work with a group and a lot of STEM field individuals, even medical school, um, do work in groups and even you get philosophy students do too. Um, but in physics, you're going to need someone to bounce off questions and ideas off of. And if you're stuck somewhere, someone else can help you. And I'm just going to be honest, a lot of professors suck at explaining things. I'm just going to be straight on here. So having a group kind of helps everybody help each other. And you're going to see the exact same people all the way through until you graduate. There, my school, I think graduation, there was only four of us. And we had to sit there and wait for the biology students to graduate. And there was like half the place was like two thirds was biology students and one third was other. <laughs> and I was the only female to graduate. And I think I've, I've been only like one or two feet. I think I've only ever seen like, in both universities, I've only ever seen like four women, uh, an undergraduate and one black kid, black guy, um, in the physics program. And I'm not counting engineers. Engineers take our classes too. Um, but the diversity lies in, um, there's a lot of South Asians, Saudis, um, East Asians, and Hispanic individuals. Um, uh, mostly from Mexico, but also from, um, Peru and Venezuela. In Argentina, um, South America and, Me and Mexico actually, South America the continent and uh, Mexico particularly the country do have really good physics programs. So some of my professors came from there. And a lot of your graduate students are gonna be diverse. It's just undergraduates not. And so you gotta be kind of aware of that. So if one of the reasons why you can't find a group um, because of the students which are all male um or all white men and you've noticed some racism or 
Islamophobia or what have you in that group, or maybe you're just not into it, then I recommend finding a group online, trying to find a study group through an online source. I do not know one, but um, if I do, I'll link one below. If you know one, link it below. Um, and try to find people that way through Twitter, um, through etc. And that's one way you can try to find a study group, especially if you're having problems. And you could also study group with graduate students, get to know them. If you notice the graduate students are a little bit more mixed and you kind of get into them, Go ahead and hang out with them. Ask them questions. Don't treat them like your um, teachers, but they'll help you move along and they might actually get to know them. Or in most of your undergrad classes, you can actually hang out with engineers. So hang out with engineers if that helps you um, in that group. Engineers tend to be more diverse than physicists. Physicists are like five, you know, we're such a small group. Um, and that's gonna help you further your career along to network but it's also going to just help you formulate ideas and ask questions which is what you're going to need and these kids are gonna sometimes they'll have and talk about internship opportunities and etc and the fourth thing is what i learned obviously outside of university is besides the work um, ethic which is go to your professor um and besides meaning classmates on campus and besides coding is use Twitter. Uh, I know that sounds really terrible, um, but I noticed with, especially with my humanities and even with my physics is follow professors on Twitter, follow professors from around the world on Twitter and not just professors, i.e. famous physicists like Michio Kaku or Neil Geisman, whatever. Follow them, follow professors, follow grad stu graduate students, follow students. You don't have to tweet, by the way. When I say you don't have to actually tweet. But what you're doing is when you follow these people, a lot of times these professors will put down opportunities or they'll talk about their field. Um, Humanities does this. Um, professors will throw in conferences, they'll throw in tips and tricks to their field, how to write journal articles, they'll link journal articles. And as a physicist, um, physicists will do the exact same thing. They'll talk about conferences, talk about how to be a physicist, um, they'll talk about the difficulties of working there or at the university or, and then they also talk about experiments and to be a physicist it helps to kind of know um, what's going on in the physics world and there's so much but it kind of helps you formulate especially if you're curious about what you want to do in life it helps to be updated and it also gives you ways to get into job opportunities internships um, it'll kind of be it's kind of a way to network but at the same time being aware of surroundings and it'll help you with your career wise and help you kind of figure out what you want to do. And those are some of my tricks. I'll do some more uh, because there is plenty of more to work as a physicist. Um, and right now, I think I kind of focus more on a queer oriented way for people to kind of figure out how to kind of put stuff on the resume and stuff to look out for. Um, I promise this is like, this is a green scarf and it matches my black sweater. I promise like I'm not morphing into one blob over here. <laughs> I just wore a color that blends into my shirt. But um, you don't have to do all these, but out of all of them that I recommend, out of the four that I recommended, I actually recommend coding. And that's going to help you with graduate school in physics, it's going to help you with your physics career. Because all your physics professors are coding, by the way, and they just don't require it for most universities as a requisite for your degree. Um, but I'm just going to tell you, know it. Learn it on your own. If you know it already, good for you. If you don't, learn it on your own or take some classes to learn it um, for free or on your university, okay? That's going to help you with your career. It's going to help you with your job opportunities and etc and I guess one last thing is try to figure out 
what certificates or experiences that jobs that you're kind of interested in are looking for. And that might help you figure out as an undergraduate what to do to further yourself. So that way when you graduate, it's a lot easier to find a job. Um, experiences are okay. Internships are great. But also make sure you have certificates or make sure you know how to code and et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Um, thank you guys. And I know this is kind of a weird um, video outside of my other videos, but whatever. And I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you.